Hi, welcome to a new video dedicated to a new Epson product. This is the H111D. It's nothing else than the smallest FPV quad capture working in 5.8 GHz. This machine weighs only less than 19 grams, so it's typical nano quad capture, but as you can see, it's a little bit more long. Uh, I can give you the information about the diagonal distance between motor, for example, and as you can see, this quadcopter enter into the 60 millimeters category size, okay, approximately, yes, 60 millimeters in diagonal. Um, and start on front, you have the FPV camera, and the good news, uh, the uh, lens, partially blocked by the canopy, is in an M7 format. It means that you will be able to install one with a wider field of view. For example, I got a couple of them, so you can install such size. This one is 120 degrees. This one is 170 degrees. So if you are planning to fly more indoors, I strongly advise to install more than 170. And more outdoors, a 120 will be enough. What is coming with the packaging? An USB charging cable. It takes approximately 35, 40 minutes to recharge. You have to plug like this. You have a small hole on top. And here also on the back, a rear connector, you can find the corresponding notch. Uh, on the rear side, you can find also the tiny switch to power the quadcopter. Motors are classic 6 mm by 12 uh, coreless motors. Okay, I give you the proof. They are 6 mm. Props are 33 mm. 34. They are classics for nanos. So, as I said previously, or everything weight less than 19 grams. Let's give the exact weight. 18.4 grams. It's really, really light for a machine including a small FPV transmitter. Uh, all the antenna are patched. Okay, no wires inside. Everything is patched. Our antenna is directly printed on the PCB. The transmitter is a classic uh, chassis from Amazon with a built-in 4.3 inch FPV monitors. Bad news, when you are losing the FPV con uh, range or uh, control or link, sorry, the uh, FPV screen will turn into black. So no FPV friendly FPV monitors. What are the roles or the other uh, connector or input? On the left side, on the bottom one, you can find another how to connect your favorite goggles. Uh, you will need a two position jack, 3.5 mm jack uh, connector. Here, a USB uh, mini USB port to flash a new firmware for the transmitter and a micro SD port to insert a micro SD card to record your FPV flight. So you cannot record the built-in video inside the quadcopter but only the transmitted uh, signal. Uh, the left stick, if you briefly press on it, will engage the headless mode and if you long press on it more than 1.5 seconds, you will uh, actionate a flip stand indicating which direction to perform the flip on the right stick. If you briefly press on the right stick, you will engage the expand mode. One more time, you will return to the normal mode and if you long press on it while the throttle is down, you will enter into the menus where you will be able to select, for example, the exact 5.8 GHz frequency uh, broadcasting the signal because in the Epson protocol, the transmitter is sending which on which frequency to send the FPV signal. So it's good, for example, if you want to match your favorite FPV Google or FPV monitor. The signal is in NTSC format, so let's turn everything. Okay, so you have the white LEDs here, turn on the transmitter. So uh, this uh, FPV monitor is visible even in strong daylight, but I advise to add eventually a small sunshade to increase the visibility. So as I said, throttle down and long press on the on the right stick, you can go to the 5.8 GHz frequency where you can select your exact frequency. Let's se select, for example, the uh, uh, 5740 MHz and I will turn on this FPV monitor set exactly on the same frequency you will see the difference 
in terms of quality of the uh, signal. So no problem to match an existing uh, frequency for to match your IPV monitor, look that. So out of the box, uh, the uh, field of view is quite limited, something close to 70 degrees. It's not really flyable in, in reality in FPV. So I strongly advise to perform the uh, lens mode. I will show how to eclipse the bottom side of the uh, H111 to access to the uh, uh, camera lens. Okay, so uh, it's a little bit disappointing out of the box in terms of uh, uh, field of view, so uh, it's not really usable, it's a paradox for FTV, FPV machine. Um, in terms of line curtain duration time, you have approximately 5 minutes, okay, with a 150 power built-in LiPo battery. No possibility to remove it, so it means that you will have to wait 40 minutes before to engage a new FPV flight. That's a real, real drawback of this machine. Okay, uh, concerning the structure, here are the arms. Arms are made by two parts of the P PDB, the main PDB of the uh, quadcopter. I'm afraid that on a hard surface, in, ca in case of crash on a hard surface, this part will break or in the base case you will lose maybe one LED because there will be a micro crack for the LED, LED connections. Okay, so um, here is the basic. So, it seems to be to have all the ingredients. Uh, the built-in video transmitter, I strongly suspect, ha is uh, 25 milliwatts. Okay, so the signal can uh, cross one or two walls without any problem inside the house. So that's the good news. You have also a, a small bag with a spare of uh, props and the instruction manual where you can find exact everything, especially how to calibrate the zeros. You have to push the uh, throttle stick in lower right than action at the right stick, left and right, to engage the calibration procedure. Okay, so now let's engage a demo flight with the default lens. Hi, welcome to the first demo flight of the new Epson H111D. So, uh, it's associated with this uh, very narrow field of view out of the box. And I will show how is visible the uh, transmission, the uh, screen, in, even in the presence of strong light. So, you can see how it's still visible, so the brightness is okay. And I want to show that it's also possible to fly this quadcopter with the uh, Devo uh, controller compatible with Deviation TX, uh, modded with an um, 87105, okay, and with a 19 wheel. So just select the Epson product with the uh, H107 protocol, and, and after it should bind, okay. So. We may be arranging it in this in the operation. Okay, return on. Okay, so as you can see, you can fly it without any problem. So that's a good news. So now we fly it with the original radio. I will power the uh, uh, everything and record the FPV flight with both the original built-in DVR and the FPV Google set on the right frequency, okay? I will record here, record here. So it's recording, I will engage, first of all, in beginner rate. So, let's check the R rate. Oh, rather slow. Okay, let's start in expert mode. If the situation is improved, not so much some deviation. The wind is a little bit here, so to perform a flip you have to long press the left stick until you hear this beep. Okay, and it's perform a flip. That's correct. I hope you will be able to see the uh, built-in screen as well, so everything will be recording. Hello. So you can see that out of the box the uh, field of view is quite limited, so not very compatible with FPV practice practice, but it's a nice flyer, by the way. So no more altitude hold like uh, the uh, H107D+, which was really annoying, even if some beginner like that is not very compatible with FPV in my point of view. So look at the transmission, pretty good, okay. Um, so, look the top speed. Let's perform another. 
Well, we stop recording. Well, now we continue to record. Okay. Oops, I was wrong. Sorry. I will may maybe perform a gyros calibration. Stop recording here. Stop recording here. Okay. And so to perform a compass calibration, just push like this, turn like this, and it will perform the calibration. Okay, let's resume the light. Okay, it's recording. Let's go. Yes, much better right now. Playing well. Got some problem to turn to the right. The wind is here. Yes. Okay, so now I will perform more the uh, lens mode and to, sh to show the results uh, with this uh, wider field of view. Okay, so I will show how to first of all to uh, disassemble at least the lower part of the uh, H111D. So remove these two screws here on the front side, very tiny. Okay. Okay, and then use a small screwdriver with a plate surface and you have to push inside the rail the uh, clips inside. Okay, just push them. Okay, and like this. When it's pushed, you will be able to remove very easily the, the lower part. So, okay, just use to eclipse the rest and you will be able also the front side to remove. So here is the lens and you have this one so be aware to not bend too much the ribbon cable and you have this tiny lens so it's probably glue and use some magnifiers and a small tweeter try to scratch first the, uh, the glue over the uh, radius of the lens thread okay that's the most tricky part to do to clean everything then you will be able to gently unscrew the internal lens okay let's do it so after to gently remove the glue from it was on the bottom side I managed to gently turn little by little the screw and now I'm able to uh, remove it gently by spinning to the right and I will be able to remove it really gently with a small tweeter without damaging the uh, external uh, plastic uh, lens of the original uh, lens. Okay, so I removed the original lens here. Try to insert the new one without any introduction of any dust. In any case, use a, uh, you have some special tools to clean uh, a lens. So now I will insert uh, this model. Okay, it's a 120 degrees field of view, if I'm not wrong. So it should fit directly the thread. And I hope uh, there will be enough uh, clearance to uh, tune the foc focus correctly. I hope, if not, I will... Uh, Oh, it's not correctly inserted, so... And try to not damage the ribbon cable. It's not bad. 
I would tr try to uh, measure with the uh, turning on, but it seems that it's not completely straight. I would check that. Um, I'm afraid I'm completely blur. Yes, it's completely blurred, so probably I would need to use another Probably we need to use another lens. Well, unfortunately, I just broke the air camera module after finishing to tune the lens. It's always like this. So, well, for so the right lens is to install the 120 degrees, 70 degrees, and it works fine. Okay, so no, I have no more, uh, no more uh, feedback, video feedback. That's a problem. No, no more images, so it just broke recently. But uh, you have to enlarge a little bit here, okay, and here to, it, to install correctly the lens, but after it fits uh, superbly. So, well, I will buy a new um, lens module for the H1, and okay, you can see the final result, and it sounds pretty good, okay. So, in fact, I was not lucky on this one. So be very, very vigilant when you're working. And I strongly advise, paradoxally, to remove the uh, lens to works. It's pretty easy, finally. So just need to pull out here by, by the rear side, and you can directly works, and it would be much more safe, safer. Okay. So, so okay. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please thumb it. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. See you next time. Bye bye.